So I'm kind of talking more um, just about metadata. I don't have any nice pictures of content to show, uh, unfortunately, but it's uh, very nice to be at this conference and, and uh, hearing the emotional connection that people have with collections. Um, what I'd like to do before I start getting into metadata is talk about or take this opportunity to um, raise awareness uh, uh, about the kind of why I'm talking about metadata and what context <coughs> Um, I and other colleagues at JISC are doing a lot of work uh, recently on, on this initiative, the National Bibliographic <coughs> Knowledge Base. Um, it's going to be a new national service uh, that we're putting together, and it's probably going to take about um, two years for it to fully develop to uh, the kind of level at which we believe it will be delivering benefits to the community. Um, it's taken quite a long time to kind of get to the, the definition of what this thing is. This is uh, my best shot at one sentence. It's about aggregating bibliographic data at scale uh, and linking with some other data sources uh, to turn it into a sort of genuine knowledge base. Um, let me just, if I could just run the animation, please. This is uh, what we've just come up with to try and um, get people excited about what this vision is. It's only 90 seconds long. By harnessing the latest digital technologies and practices, we're designing and building a national bibliographic knowledge base for the future. It will aggregate and interoperate with a collection of data sources that will describe where books are kept, in what formats, and under what conditions they are available to be accessed and used. The NBK data will ensure that libraries can provide researchers and learners with sustainable and convenient access to digital books and resources and allow libraries to make robust, data-driven decisions about the management of their print and digital book collections based on factors like historic usage and the commonness or rarity of items that are held by libraries right across the UK. The NBK will be a genuine knowledge base combining data from various sources it will also enable contributed library data to flow into other systems and appear in global search engines. This exciting collaborative partnership is an important part of building a national digital library. To discuss how you can get involved, contact help.copac at gisc.ac.uk. GISC, more power to you. <laughs> right, thanks for that. Um, so, um, this is, this is kind of, that's the context of, of why I'm talking about um, this, this type of metadata. And um, um, it's based on, or, or, or this initiative uh, comes out of a report we commissioned um, a year ago. And this is some of the recommendations. It's, it's uh, the kind of primary use case really is about supporting collections management, but there's also a resource discovery element uh, within these recommendations as well, uh, which is basically the sort of second set of uh, these six recommendations really. Um, and this is the reason that uh, we need to be thinking through um, this notion of can we, can we share um, this metadata as widely as possible. Um, I shan't read through these, but um, basically the question that I've been asking myself and asking others and have been kind of uh, convening groups to, to discuss over the last year or so, um, one of the questions I should say, there's been many questions in, uh, in relation to this NBK, um, but uh, can, can we assert um, an open license for all of this bibliographic uh, metadata and, uh, and why would we do that? Is it feasible? Um, I kind of have come to some, some answers in my head from those discussions. They're possibly not the ones that I would like. <laughs> um, so I'm still kind of asking the questions. I'm, I'm wondering um, still whether it's, it's feasible. But um, let's take a step back. Uh, in case it's not kind of self-evident why, why we'd want to uh, assert uh, open licensing on this data. Uh, let's just ask these questions. I mean, why would we do it? Who would benefit? And, and what is actually stopping us from, from, uh, from asserting this, this, this level of licensing? Um, so why should we do it? Um, perhaps this is familiar to people. I don't know. It's a sort of five-star steps towards open linked data. This was very much um, all the rage uh, a few years ago. I think linked data and that whole notion kind of ebbs and flows a little bit. Um, this was uh, certainly going around the conferences in sort of 2011, 2012. Um, it's got kind of five steps towards the holy grail of, of this open linked data. And, and I think it was, uh, there was some kind of... Uh, almost religious fervor about this a wee while ago, I think that's kind of calmed down a bit now. And people, I'm, I'm hearing people just say, well, let's not you know, completely focus on that whole five-star five 
open link data. Let's just think about linked data in, in all of its uh, kind of formats and ways we can do it. But I think it is useful to have these steps <clears throat> and um, in, in terms of you know, what it enables us to do. Uh, the step down from, from uh, open link data is, is using uh, uniform resource identifiers, and I think this is really important. I'll go on to that a little bit later. Um, the, the open format and the structured data, that, uh, that allows um, various uh, you know, um, other things to be done with the data. Um, and indeed, we've, we've got that with, with, with MARC, with library MARC data. Um, it's obviously, it's an open format, and it's, and it's very structured. Um, so that's, that should stand us in good stead. Um, but obviously, what I'm talking about here is that, is that first step down at the bottom there, the open licensing. Uh, I'm not sure whether they strictly sort of build on each other, but it's obviously going to be a, a, the best foundation we could have for achieving this, this kind of distribution of data that we, that we would pr presumably prefer, uh, and not just for discovery and linking, but, but for, for pushing the data in any direction it wishes to go. We, we, we took a view and take a view about the, the NBK that uh, really, we, we, if, you know, if commercial providers uh, want to get hold of the data, then, then they should be able to, and they should be, this data should surface for users, wherever users are. Um, um, and uh, <clears throat> what, 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 what's the prize here? Well, um, this kind of gets to this, this notion of, of the, the title of my paper about linking communities together with, with metadata. Um, this screen here is a screenshot from some work that JISC, the Archives Hub, uh, and COPAC did a few years ago. Um, and it's, it's basically it's bringing data from, from those two services, from the library side and from the archives side, and, it, and it's allowing people to kind of put, push data together, mix it up and slice and dice it. Um, and this is a kind of uh, a mock-up, a suggestion of, of how that data could be brought together. So uh, and I like this word, the recombinant possibilities of data. I think once you've got it in these atomistic parts and you can start uh, linking and, and, and doing some clever things with it, I think it it's, could really drive some, some novel research, uh, certainly some, some novel ways of visualizing the data. So, so this is, this is you know, where we could go if, if perhaps uh, we did you know, carry on this, um, this investigation as to, as to how open we can make this data. Um, and this is just kind of an acknowledgement that uh, are we still talking about marked data? Um, it's, it's been around for decades and decades, obviously, in different formats. And, and uh, I mean, we are aware uh, within JISC, obviously, that um, it's likely that um, you know, certainly bibliographic formats um, are changing and will change. And we would expect the service provider that we want to work with to deliver the NBK to, to be very alert to, <coughs> to these new developments and, uh, and, and new formats coming, coming along. Um, so uh, that, that second question, um, who, who would benefit? I think it was, perhaps it's fairly obvious who, would, who might benefit if we could, as I said, slice and dice that data in, in ways. Well, at the moment, there's lots, of, there's lots of research, there's lots of evidence to, to suggest that um, users, end users, um, perhaps particularly uh, graduates, undergraduates, um, they're looking very much towards uh, to Google and web scale search engines um, and commercial library discovery services, uh, and they're not really looking much, much further than that in terms of where they go for their data and what they rely on. And of course, um, you know, large scale um, commercial entities um, are, are very well equipped to drive users towards other commercial entities, and, and so. What we're really hoping to do um, with the NBK and with this focus on data is to kind of clear, clear some of that uh, opacity with, with these systems um, and r really try and sort of bring, bring the libraries and by inference kind of archival data perhaps as well, um, it, make it more visible on the web. Um, and this is also something that I know as OCLC uh, have been talking about a lot recently. They, they talk about this um, library-shaped black hole on the web. Um, but if we can, if we can manage to, to make this data more open and push it around a bit more, then we we, uh, we assume, we hope that um, we can we can get get users to be engaged more with library data, uh, to to rely less on on maybe having to having to buy things, having students having to buy their own copies, and, and make more use of what libraries are obviously there for, which is to you know push resources around and 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 allow the borrowing and referencing of resources, and also. If we're looking at open data, um, we, we would 
also expect that to have an impact on um, uh, discovery services. And uh, there's, a, there's a very interesting um, initiative at the moment that is uh, being pushed along by EBSCO and, and other organizations uh, called Folio, the future of libraries is open. Um, and so that's, that's hopefully going to promote uh, and support uh, this notion of more open discovery services. And along with that, um, we would expect, hope, that uh, a, a kind of uh, a, a more a richer kind of data ecosystem of library bibliographic data would also include uh, pointing people and directing people into um, open access books which don't really, um, aren't really that visible in, in commercial discovery systems at the moment. Uh, I would also carry on this theme of linking across communities and, and, uh, and allowing kind of the library data to, to hook up with uh, other forms of um, open data, such as uh, Europeana and the European Library are, are interested in making available. So I think um, that sort of sets out uh, who might benefit and, and why we might do it. So the question perhaps is, what is, what is stopping us? Why, why can't we um, just simply say, okay, it's library data, it's, a lot of it's quite factual, and you, you, can't, you can't claim rights over factual information. Um, however, there's a, a lot of other um, information that is, um, uh, creeps into, into the kind of data ecosystem, as I'm beginning to call it, um, that, 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 that um, entities have, have uh, put effort into actually um, adding to those records, and there are commercial interests um, around mark records. Uh, it is a business, um, and uh, although one could argue that, that JISC um, might be or, or should be uh, seeking to, to disrupt business models that don't work, um, I don't think JISC is really in the business of, of, of breaking uh, or breaking businesses. Um, so, <clears throat> yeah, I'm mean, of 80%, I, I know this is true for the British Library, perhaps others as well, 80% of their records they, they acquire or they, they purchase from commercial data suppliers. Uh, and I believe that figure for, for records is, is right in many cases as well. So it's, and these are some of the organizations, of course, that, uh, that do supply um, these records. But it's not just that, really. It's not just that it's, um, it's a commercial business. Um, it's also quite hard um, to actually really understand and drill down into the provenance of these records. And, um, and, and JISC and uh, ROUK uh, have uh, sort of kind of add to the complexity of that, and we make uh, mark records available to, to our LUK members. And the Library of Congress um, uh, make a lot of records available to some of these suppliers and to libraries. Uh, British Library uh, have, have a role in this ecosystem as well. And so, so there's a lot of kind of interchange of data between, um, and, and records get added to incrementally as they go through these, through these different organizations and are handled by these organizations. Uh, and after a while, you, you, it's, it's, you, you see records and just, it's, it's as I say, very difficult to know uh, how some of these records have really come into being, wh where, they've, where they've passed through and what processes. <clears throat> so, uh, I guess, the, so if, if, if we've come to the conclusion that it's, it's perhaps not uh, easy at the moment to see a way of uh, confidently and decisively asserting um, uh, an open license for these records. Um, what can we do, perhaps, to uh, to reduce what I'm calling here? We're, we're often referred to as kind of data quality issues in terms of, of the bibliographic data, uh, but it, w it might also be kind of characterised as a sort of data inefficiency. In as far as um, there's a great deal of duplicated effort uh, going on across libraries and, and cataloguing going on over here and cataloguing going on over here, and um, so. Yes, how can we perhaps increase efficiency and reduce that duplication? Um, it seems like the, the kind of uh, most promising way forward or, or a, a kind of slightly different take on, on how we can make sure that uh, organizations, institutions, libraries are, uh, are kind of relying on a, a single kind of canonical source of information is, is very much to, to focus on this notion of um, identifiers and, and the use of identifiers. Um, been around for a long time, some of these, some of these frameworks. This is VF, um, and I put in the search term JISC, um, and got this back, the Joint Industry Stunt Committee, which um, is quite interesting. I sometimes feel working at JISC like I'm stumbling around on fire, like this poor chap down here. 
Um, but I think it is useful to, uh, to be able to differentiate between us and, uh, and these uh, stunt people. Um, and so VF um, is, uh, is sort of, it uses a variety of um, identifiers. And, and this, uh, oh, I should talk a, briefly about um, URIs, anybody who's not familiar with, with um, URIs, which featured in that, that, that one of the fourth step of that linked data um, diagram. Um, essentially, it's just a way of asserting um, a, a, a uniqueness um, to uh, something, someone, uh, in this case, me, um, a grainy picture of me. Uh, I've taken this uh, URI from, from um, OCLC, been kind enough to uh, uniquely identify me. Uh, or it could be a, a place. This is Oslo. This is their version, their identifier for Oslo. Um, so uh, it seems to me, and, and, and I think others as well, the British Library are, are very, uh, very instrumental in, in pushing um, ISNI, in the International Standard Name Identifier. Um, it seems to me that we, we need to um, get, get very, very engaged, um, particularly with this scheme. Um, this uh, JISC is doing a lot of work uh, with, with ORCID as well. That's um, a researcher identifier scheme. And in fact, ORCID is a, is a sort of a subset um, of, the, of the ISNI framework. That um, deals with uh, standard names, names for individuals, and so names for researchers, but also names for organizations over here. And um, we will be um, keen to, to push uh, the service provider that we're working with uh, on the NBK to, to very much uh, engage um, with this and, and, and other identifier schemes, so that uh, yeah, so that we can um, try and try and build momentum towards um, making sure that uh, we're reducing duplication as much as possible. So um, yes, is this feasible? Well, um, perhaps not right now in terms of, of that licensing question. I'm, I haven't given up on it. Uh, as I said at the start, it's, it's possibly not the, the answer I was hoping for when I started asking these questions of various groups. Um, but nonetheless, uh, I think that uh, there's plenty to be doing in the meantime just to, uh, just to get this system built. Uh, obviously, in the first phase, it's going to be trying to reach out to libraries and trying to aggregate a, as many different um, data sets as possible, uh, catalog, catalog sets from, from libraries. At the moment, we've got, we just runs the COPAC service. Um, that's, that's bringing together data from about 90 libraries for the MBK. We're looking to um, increase that dramatically. We want to work with sort of over 200 libraries and we'll be, over the next couple of years, reaching out to uh, academic and specialist libraries in the UK and, and asking you to kind of participate and, and help us to, to, to build this system. Um, we want to try and, whereas COPAC in the past has, has, has you know, kind of by need had to sort of throttle the way that it's, it, it kind of engages with libraries, we want the MBK and working with uh, a large scale service provider to, to open, open this up and, um, and be able to aggregate much more data. Okay, um, and I think that's me done. Thank you. Thank you.